Bluetooth smart locks can be hacked wirelessly, Apple begins a bug bounty program, finally, point of sale terminals are hacked once again, and Qualcomm had a few Android chipset security flaws. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I'm Shannon Morse, and this is ThreatWire for August 9, 2016, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. If you haven't checked out our Patreon just yet, please do so. We have lots that we want to do for the show, but we can't do it without your support. Patreon.com slash ThreatWire is the place to support ThreatWire, and the link is in the show notes. So it turns out a large percentage of Bluetooth low energy smart locks can be wirelessly unlocked by an unauthorized person, according to researchers Anthony Rose and Ben Ramsey. Discussed during the DEF CON Hacker Conference, which was super fun by the way, you guys should go, it was held this past weekend in Las Vegas, they showed that 12 out of 16 tested Bluetooth smart locks had problems, allowing them to wirelessly unlock them. The vendors with vulnerable devices include QuickLock, iBlueLock, Plantraco, Xiumate, Alexa, Cycle, Viens, Okidoki, and Mesh Motion. August smart locks were not found vulnerable, but in another talk at DEF CON, these locks were shown to have some problems as well. Bluetooth low energy does not necessarily have to be insecure. In fact, a lot of the vulnerabilities found were in their implementation. For example, plain text passwords being sent over Bluetooth. There were problems with encryption or with the smartphone application that they used. All 12 of the vendors were contacted, but none of them had a fix planned for their customers. Now, in another talk, researcher Damien Cockwell demonstrated BLE hacking by intercepting Bluetooth connections and starting a man-in-the-middle attack to inject new commands into the data be sent to a Bluetooth device. For example, he hacked a Bluetooth robot. His findings and his code are shared on GitHub, and in the cases like these, the researchers always recommend turning off Bluetooth use on unpatched devices. Better late than never, I guess? Uh, it's, come on, guys, it's 2016. On Thursday at Black Hat, an annual InfoSec con that happens right before DEF CON in Vegas, Apple Head of Security Engineering and Architecture Ivan Kristic announced that Apple will begin a security bounty program by invite only, awarding various amounts of hard cold cash for found vulnerabilities in their products. These include access to user data from a sandbox process for $25,000, all the way up to secure boot firmware components for $200,000 bug bounties. The program only has 24 spots open for security researchers to start, but others will be considered in the future. Now, due to the controversy and some of the negative feedback regarding their previous court case against the FBI in regards to the San Bernardino iPhone, Apple is moving towards incentivizing security researchers to bring these vulnerabilities to Apple instead of a third party. Christic said to the Black Hat audience, quote, we've had great help from researchers like you in improving iOS security all along. Feedback that we we've heard pretty consistently, both from my team at Apple and also from researchers directly, is that it's getting increasingly more difficult to find some of those most critical types of security vulnerabilities. So the Apple Security Bounty Program is going to reward researchers who actually share critical vulnerabilities with Apple. This announcement comes three years three years after Microsoft began their own bug bounty program and several years after other large companies as well. I don't know if you know this about me, but I used to work at a payment processor, so installing point of sale systems and credit card terminals was a part of my job. It was really fun and I got to see why vulnerabilities happen firsthand. Well, it turns out another point of sale vendor, Oracle-owned Micros, has had a security breach. Malicious code was found in over 700 legacy systems and Micros has asked customers to change their online support passwords. The micro servers were strangely communicated with servers that are suspected of being connected to a Russian cybercrime gang, and code embedded on the micro systems allowed the attackers to steal usernames and passwords. Now, this isn't the first point of sale system to be hacked in recent years and probably won't be the last. Attacking point of sale systems gives a thief a very easy way to steal credit card data to sell on the deep web, and then that data is then used to create fake credit cards for fraud transactions. Throughout this year, four security flaws have been found in Qualcomm chipsets running on many popular Android devices, possibly totaling over 900 million devices in total. Now, these problems allow an attacker to gain escalated privileges on a user's smartphone by getting them to install, for example, a malware-infected application. It wouldn't require any additional special permissions, so it wouldn't look suspicious in any way. The chipset affected is used in smartphones from BlackBerry, 
Huawei, HTC, LG, Motorola, Samsung, Sony, and OnePlus. And all of these are the most up-to-date smartphones as well, so not the older branded ones. Now, patches have already been distributed to users with Android phones, but others have to make their way through carriers before being released. And those specific Android phones are the Nexus line. Now, Qualcomm has already patched all four back in April through July, so this is a great example of how long a user may have to wait to receive a security fix through a carrier with an Android phone. The flaw hasn't been used in the wild so far, as far as Checkpoint knows, according to Checkpoint Security, and Checkpoint's Quadrooter Scanner app can be used to scan your phone for any of the vulnerabilities. Quadrooter is the name of the Qualcomm chipset vulnerabilities. Now, thanks again to all of the fine people who contribute to patreon.com slash threatwire. I apologize, my voice is a little bit shot, but I was definitely going to make sure to record an episode of Threatwire for you this week. You guys keep bringing the show back to life, and you are the reason that we keep bringing you news every single week. Any little bit helps to help us grow the show, and in return, we will build an RSS for you, and when we reach our next goal, we're going to bring on another episode every single week. We might even feature your adorable fur baby like this brand new one in an upcoming episode. Check out the perk levels on Patreon and thanks again for helping us keep this show completely independent and completely ad free. And of course, if you cannot donate, hit the subscribe button, which I believe is over there, or share this episode on your favorite social media page. Use the hashtag, hashtag threatwire so that we can see it. And with that, I am Shannon Morse and I will see you on the internet.